So in this presentation, we will discuss on the very revised CA technical standard for the construction of electrical plants and electrical lines regulation 2022. So this is a revised updated version of the standard which were published earlier in the 2010 and after as we know that there is a significant change in the technological upgradation need for the flexibility that is arising in the system change in the system requirement with ongoing green energy transition required low level of required level of uh, the transmission security optimization in the entire the planning process from generation to transmission to distribution and various other factor this has all these has resulted in the revision revision in the standard of 2010 and after which the 2022 standard has been published. So let us have a look at the major aspect of this standard. So this standard is applicable to the generating companies, transmission licenses, distribution licenses, CTUs, state transmission utilities, which are basically the CTU and the state transmitter are basically responsible for the planning of the system while the it is applicable to the owners like the generating companies transmission licensing and distribution licenses and this standard has been enforced from the 28th December 2022 prior to that the 2010 standard was applicable standard has various sections so it uh, includes uh, uh, chapter 1 which uh, basically deals with the commencement and applicability and the uh, definition of various terms that is used in this uh, standard and what are the general requirement that is applicable to all the electrical plants and electrical lines as covered in this uh, standards. So chapter 2 basically deals with the chapter 2 to basically chapter 4 that deals with the specific like the thermal, hydro, substation and switchyard and electrical lines respectively. So we will discuss majorly on the substation followed by transmission line and some major aspect of the thermal and hydropower plant while going through this uh, presentation. So let us begin with the general requirement described for construction of the power plant and transmission line asset. The first thing it states that all the plant and the transmission line, the substation and associated equipment should be suitable for uh, operation in the full range of the ambient as well as and the other environmental conditions that is prevailing at the site. So you can see that uh, this is the suitability part. So thus it is uh, very much uh, important uh, to first uh, carry out uh, a basically detailed overview or the review of the condition at the site where these substation transmission line are being constructed or are being installed so it is very important to have a complete site review in order to ensure that the whatever that is being installed whatever that is being constructed the design everything is having uh, the consideration that it is able to operate within the full range of ambient and the other environmental condition that is prevailing at the site then the second aspect is that all the parts and the equipments or the component or assemblies of equipment or the system itself used as a part of the plant the switch or the substation or the lines uh, should be made of proven material and stab, uh, which should have the established physical and chemical properties so that it can operate travel free for its entire duration of life cycle as defined in this uh, standard okay so the third major aspect that we are going to that is, is being dealt is that uh, all the design of the various part as well as the overall design should be as per this standard and other CA regulations. So not only this standard other regulations of the CA that should also be followed. In addition it should also be as per the all well recognized internal and national standards as applicable and defined in this standard. So there are in various sections, different different kind of a standards, international standard and national standards has been uh, applied and means that uh, various, uh, you know, means the design, the uh, characteristic, all this should comply with the different different kind of standards like international, like be it can be of IC, it can be of uh, uh, DIN, so it can be of BIS, so all these are there so this we will go through the different section and when we are going to discuss the different chapters then uh, the third 
uh, major aspect is that uh, uh, sorry that not the third uh, basically the fourth one basically so it is uh, that all the equipment and the system installed should comply with the various statutes regulations and safety code as applicable so wherever the safety codes are there wherever the different regulation are required to be in place wherever the different statutes statutory things are there that should also be applicable for all the equipment and system that is being installed for the electrical plant electrical trans electrical lines that is considered in this regulation coming to the design and construction basically and the testing of all equipment basically this is the part that uh, yeah so in this part uh, it states that this should comply with the latest version of the bis the bureau of indian standards or any reputed first uh, international standards like iec mme then the din or its equivalents and in case you find any conflict of uh, means let us say one part of the standard or one part of the specification is conflicting with the in the indian standard and the international standard then in that case the indian standard will be prevailing so that is has to be uh, always kept in mind further all the testing that is required to be done as per the protocol defined it should be done as per the defined protocols in the ca stand ca guidelines for the type test for the major equipment of power sector you can see the link is already available the testing requirement also states that the following aspect that it should be the, the, uh, done at all stages of procurement okay the manufacturing erections commissioning and it is basically to ensure that these testing are done to ensure that the installed equipment finally at the site is as per the requirement mentioned during the procurement so that whatever you are procuring whatever the specification that you have designed for after doing all the inspection of the site and everything that the environmental consideration social config consideration other factors the means uh, weather condition climatic conditions uh, other electrical consideration at the side where it is being connected all these you have to consider and based on that you have designed some specification you have gone for the procurement you have you have going where you it will be manufactured then it will be brought to the site erection and then final the commissioning but each stages the complete uh, the entire testing has to be done and it should uh, comply it should mean that whatever you have designed it has it the same thing has been the equipment behavior characteristic material everything is as per the whatever you have specified in the procurement so it is very important for to maintain the quality it also needs to follow the quality assurance program as mutually agreed between the equipment owner and the supplier this should be as per the electric cl uh, guidelines basically for the model quality assurance plan for major equipment of power sector so this is also very important aspect that need to be considered and you can see the link for that uh, plan is also provided in the presentation this standard further clearly defines the owner responsibility and what is required to be implemented by the implementation by the owner what are the things that is very much required so this uh, uh, the first thing uh, as a part of the owner responsibility is that it should always have a built design build this drawing basically not design build drawing for all type of civil mechanical electrical instru instrumentation architectural works okay all the project related design memorandum technical descriptions data sets operating manuals and manufacturer warranties for all major items or equipment or both should be available all the time this is very much required because you know means the at the site level pulls comes and go different uh, wings are involved from the come one is the wing that is going for the project uh, uh, commissioning part then one another will be on the final validation part or checking part testing part and then the operational part and maintenance part will be there so this that's why it is very important that whatever is the requirement design memorandum description data sheet everything it should be available all the time it should not throughout the project duration 
it should also uh, retain all the tests that is being performed as a part of the contract and all the technical documents related to design engineering construction of electrical plants or electric line or both so it is very important that these details are retained at the site and that's why it is given in the under the responsibility of the owner these details are required during the various stages of the operation basically while the plant is going under the annual overhauling while the electrical transmission line is going for the design change or there is a requirement of upgradation work in the future so in those cases these documents are very pertinent then the second aspect is the what is required to be one important aspect is the project monitoring so that uh, this uh, during the implementation of the project the owner should further implement a it best technology it best system for the project monitoring this is applicable for the thermal unit of rating 250 megawatt and above hydro of 100 megawatt and above and transmission line and substation of 220 kv and above the web based system should have the connectivity with major suppliers and contractor to ensure the progress of the activities is known to all what is the requirement the various requirement that is coming into during the installation of the system or commissioning of the system erection of the system basically for this should also have the provision to connect uh, with the centralized project monitoring system of the ca the applications should also be used for monitoring of all the compliances of applicable codes standard guidelines cyber security codes and the safety requirements so these are very much important this is a, one of the very much important aspect while the project is being commissioned so the project monitoring part is very much important of the common requirements for all plants and electrical line it is time to learn on the construction requirement for the substations which are above 66 kV this is basically chapter 3 which has two parts the part a deals with the 66 kV and above station and the part b is for the below level substation like the 33 by 11 33 by 22 or the 22 by 11 kV substation our discussion will be mainly limited to the part A that is 66 kV and above substation. The standard states that the substation planning should be done as per the CA transmission planning criteria 2023. Earlier the planning criteria was uh, they, I mean, uh, which was uh, being uh, utilized was of the CA transmission planning criteria 2013 and the revised one has come into force in the this has been published in the march 23 so you can visit the presentation on this new transmission planning criteria in another video so that, that will help you a lot in understanding what are the changes that has been incorporated in the 2023 and why this there is a revision in the transmission planning criteria 2000 why this uh, new transmission planning criteria has been put in place after the, the earlier one that is 2013 the intro of uh, let us learn about the what are the important factors in substation design and construction so first thing is uh, we will be talking about the fault level control so uh, this is very much important because the overall design will be dependent upon the what is the fault level at which for which the substation is being designed what is the fault current that for which the different instruments are rated basically so so the minimum rated short circuit current with a stand capability for equipment in substation or switch on has been defined like 66 kV the rated equipment rated shorts time withheld current should be 31.5 kA for one second then for 110 and 220 it is 40 220 and 230 it is 50 400 kV it is 63 kA now 765 it is 50 kA 50 kA all these are required for the for the uh, this uh, short uh, time with a stand current for one second and uh, in order we uh, if, if there can be a condition that uh, the substation after this means a value in the planning phase it can exceed the fault level permissible fault level whatever the fault whatever the fault current is there it can exceed that one because of the ongoing connectivity expansion in the system addition of the generating plant near to the substation this can this 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 uh, increase in the fault level is very much uh, uh, it can happen basically so the what are the measures to limit the fault level that can be required uh, that can be taken is the first is the sectionalization and splitting of the substation bus so you can sub, uh, split the substation bus accordingly rearrange the feeders so that to ensure that it, the fault level of the two different part of the system is or two different part of the substation is uh, below the 
rated fault current basically then you can also install a series reactor on the line or the bus to reduce means uh, the impact of the during the fault and the third thing that can also be done is the installation of the fault current limiter on the line bus or transformer or the reactors or measure for the series reactor or fcl on existing system based on the power system studies and dynamics so this has to be carried out all these measures like the uh, you do the sectionalization you do this uh, series reactor installation or fault current limiter all this has to be done based on the power system studies and measure the dynamic simulation so the the next aspect is the design basically for what how many years this uh, substation and switch are to be designed so the life of this substation should not be less than 35 years so the, all these switch are substation design and they are associated uh, uh, this uh, design should be more than 35 years then the it should be capable to communicate the substation should be capable to communicate with the load dispatch center the backup load dispatch center the control center the isos the ta shows basically so it should be like uh, a, it should be a sas based substation 61850 substation automation system or it can be like supervised the control and data vision system the scada and ems system and substation automation system so combination of both or it should be a substation uh, supervised control and data acquisition gateway should be there so so that it can have a communication with the control center different kind of control centers the substation uh, then uh, if we are talking about the other aspect of the design consideration for the substation and switch yard the first thing is the uh, we will talk about the gas insulated substation so there can be air insulated substation there can be gas insulated substation there can be hybrid of the gas as well as the air insulated substation so for gas insulated station there are switching a scheme that has been defined like for 66 kb it is single bus scheme or main and transfer scheme or double bus scheme this is basically these all this the scheme design is based on the optimization reliability flexibility requirement for from 110 to 230 kb level it is main and transfer bus scheme or double bus scheme has been uh, proposed and for 4765 kb it can be a double bus scheme and or it can be a one and half breaker scheme depending upon the location requirement of flexibility type of substation whether it is a load substation or whether it is a generator substation cooling substation so where it will be located what is the where will what are the places that has to be considered for the gas insulated substation like the seismic prone zone coastal areas high altitude area very heavily populated area the areas where the space constraints are there so for all these places where you can see the weather condition the seismic condition is not favorable or there is a space constraints in all those places the gis substation is recommended for the means uh, construction and uh, it's the enclosure that will be used for the gis should be non magnetic type for more than 400 kb it should be isolated phase type basically so and uh, you can see that the arrangement for gas section and compartments in that part you can see that the gas section and compartment facilitate uh, the future extension or either on either end so you you can you should have the facility the, the design the arrangement of gas section or the compartment should be such that on either side you can go for the extension so that there is no need for drilling cutting and welding on the existing equipment and moving or disclosing the existing switch gear base so this is very much important that while designing this um, designing for the gis substation then this aspect has to be considered and the space requirement has to be taken into consideration during that and then the designing a space it stays itself so it is very important to also consider the future expansion plans also for these projects then the, the this uh, gis insulated bus duct layout it should be easily accessible for the maintenance and it should have be easily accessible uh, to the uh, the maintaining per, maintaining uh, person or the utility and the length of the bus bar the bus duct isolator section to be optimized considering the effect of the fast transient voltage due to the isolator operation so there should be optimization in that regard and there should be availability of uh, crane for the single largest sub, uh, unit module it should be available at the substation itself so because these gas chambers are very you know means uh, a very heavy chamber so you should have a proper crane availability for the largest module weight itself then we are coming to the air insulated substation you can see the 
for the up to from 66 to 132 kV level, it is main and transfer bus scheme or double bus scheme. And for 220 and 230 kV level, you can see that it is double main and transfer bus scheme or double bus scheme or main and transfer bus scheme has been recommended. And 400 kV to 1150, including the 765 kV, it is one and a half breaker scheme that is mandated as per the standards. The bus bar material should be either the tubular aluminium pipe type or the flexible standard conductors and it should uh, consider the power flow requirement, corona effect and ambient conditions. And uh, there should be lightning shielding available, the, the overhead shield wires or the earth wire or the spikes or a combination thereof of all these should be there for shielding the substation from the lightning. And uh, if we consider about, talk about the hybrid substation, the bus bar should be air insulated types while the switch gear should be means some of the switch gear or the all functional unit enclosed in the SF6 gas insulated housing. So the bus will be outside while the switch gear and other equipment should be gas insulated in the gas insulated compartment. And the switching scheme should be for this hybrid kind of substation should be air insulated. It means the, it, it will be for the what is applicable for the air insulated substation basically. And there is also a specific and given for small specific and given for the mobile substation. And one of the common requirement for all these AIS, GIS and hybrid substation is the complete digitalization at process level the process bus architecture and merging unit for the conventional and non-conventional instrument transformers should be there at the station level ethernet based communication ic6185 protocol should be there the fiber optic cable link should be there interface should be there between the protocol process level and the station level uh, through ids and the bay level so complete substation uh, automation system is required uh, and uh, there should be security against the cyber attack. So it should be ensured that uh, whatever the equipment means, uh, the communication protocol, whatever the uh, means, you know, means uh, the different kind of protection, uh, communication, and other different protocols are being implemented. This should be cyber safe. The, then we will discuss about the grounding. Grounding should be applicable as per the IEEE ATA standards. So grounding system designed for expected life of the substation and it should uh, the maintain touch uh, it should maintain the touch uh, and the step potential within the acceptable limit as per this standards there is a special consideration has to be given for the gis substation i think design uh, so that it should handle the high frequency transient and uh, for the effective grounding in high soil resistivity area the environmental friendly materials should be utilized another aspect that is required to be considered during the grounding is that there should be a requirement, there is a very much important requirement of the periodical conditional assessment for the earthing mat, equipment pits, uh, earth rod, surface layer materials and associated connection so that the effective grounding is maintained all the time. So there is a very much requirement of the periodic condition assessment of the grounding system. And uh, in if you find any deficiency, then it also mandates that the appropriate measure to mitigate such kind of deficiency as observed during a periodic assessment of the grounding, it should be, uh, a measure should be able to resolve that and it should be able to mitigate those kind of deficiency. Then coming to the substation design parameter, so these are the substation and switch, uh, there are two aspects, the substation and switch are the uh, equipments and another one also for the transformer and the reactor. So you, should, you can go through all these different kind of requirements that is being provided here. So we're not going to the discuss into the details. There are some parameters that we need to that is required to be followed. Then the coming to the salient technical particulars of the major equipment like the transformer, reactors, uh, 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 instrument transformer. Uh, the disturbance recording devices all this we will be now be discussing the first thing is that uh, the about the transformer is that it's design manufacturing test and commissioning it should be done as per the ca standard specification and technical parameter for transformer and reactors for the 66 kv and above level so this should be done as per the provided as uh, this uh, ca standard on the specification and technical parameter for the transformers and reactors then the, it should, the it, there should be a okay, means uh, the dynamic short circuit with a stand test should be completed on one of the unit of each type of rating of the transformer and uh, that uh, it is also required that to validate the design the quality 
unless such test uh, has been performed uh, or successfully conducted as per the IS 2026 part 5 and within the last 10 years on the transformer of similar design. If, the, if one utility is doing this kind of procurement, so it should ensure that such kind of the test uh, compliance are already in place. And uh, further, the criteria for similar design should be as per the CA. So, uh, again, the standard specification and technical parameter for transformer and reactor should be considered. So, whenever you are going, means if the wind means the OEM, whenever it is providing that uh, this uh, already the such test has been done in the last 10 year for the similar kind of unit, then the, those the specification for the similar kind of unit or design should be as per the whatever the design specification standard parameter is provided in the even CA standard that need to be seen in that regard. Otherwise, you have to go for the one unit uh, of each type and rating of the transformer for dynamic short circuit with a stand test. Then during the if there is a two transformer which are required to be parallel operation, then there is a requirement to match the impedance vector group OLTC connection and range etc. So that the it should be able that there is no not much of circulating current flow. There is not much of uh, I mean, you know, I mean the sharing of the load, there is a difference in the sharing of the load, there is not much significant losses in the transformer, all need to be considered during the parallel operation. And uh, it is also mandated that for a single phase uh, kind of way, I means if you have a transformer which has, which is composing of single phase transformer for a three phase uh, system, and then for that case, you need to maintain a minimum one single phase transformer of each rating as a spare for the entire substation or switcher. And uh, this is very much mandated uh, for, for maintaining the spare so that in case of there is any failure of the instrument, then you can utilize the spare part uh, or one part of the means one phase is failed and you can utilize the spare part so that the enough redundancy is maintained at the substation level and for the system also. And uh, you should also have the soak pit and the oil collecting pit uh, for the transform. It is uh, generally means uh, general requirement basically, and it should be available with enough capacity. So, and uh, whenever uh, this transformer is being disposed, it should be disposed in the environmental friendly way. And there is also a requirement of the control switching devices. This is the for this is for minimizing the switching transient and in thus current. In the transformer and reactor of 400 kb above voltage class so you means so that it helps in uh, improving the life uh, of the basically these uh, transformers basically by avoiding the transient switching transient and induced current in the in these uh, transformers now coming to the second uh, major equipment uh, that uh, we will be considering is the sun and neutral grounding reactor. So after transformers, we will have the sun reactor service and a neutral grounding reactor. So again, the design will be as per the standard specification and technical parameters for the transformer and reactor by the CA. The grounding of line sun reactor, it will be through adequately rated neutral grounding reactors to facilitate single phase auto reclosing, which is mandated in India for the 7220 uh, kV and above system. And the bus reactor, it is required to be solidly grounded. The line reactor is uh, also, if it is to be utilized as a bus reactor, then there is, should be a suitable arrangement to bypass the neutral grounding reactor. And uh, for the neutral grounding reactor protection, you should uh, have, uh, you know, means a surge register of suitable rating like 145 kV and above. So yeah, for 145 kV service of, of suitable rating should be for 765 and 400 kV line shunt reactor and for 220 and 132 kV it should be 36 kV surgery uh, resters for the suitable of suitable ratings. And again uh, that uh, the dynamic short circuit with a stand test this has to be performed similar to the transformers and the spare requirement is again similar to the tra this the transformer for the single phase units. For wild field reactor, the soak pit and wild uh, collecting pit should be available and the control switching devices is again it is required for the all the transformer and reactor for 400 kV and above class. And again the disposable should be in an environmental friendly way. You can find the link of this uh, standard specification and technical uh, parameters for transformer and reactor in the below link provided in the slide. Let us talk about the technical particulars for the uh, capacitor, current transformer and the voltage transformer. So for the capacitor bands, it has been uh, managed that it's been installed at the voltage level of 132 kb below. 
and uh, the substation should maintain good redundancy of the in the number terms of the number of capacitor unit in order to avoid any reduction in the reactive compensation due to the failure of the capacitor unit so it should consider that the number that uh, is uh, placed in the substation for the capacitor bank it should uh, be in such a way that in case some of the capacitor bank fails then in that case also the reactive compensation should not reduce to extent that it is resulting into the problem of running the substation or it leading to the significant variation in the electrical param par parameters for the substation or the operating condition then coming to the current transformer okay so the design requirement should be as per the protection or metering system requirement and it, it should consider the rated current and under issues, the number of secondary core that is required, the accuracy class that is required, the burden, the secondary winding resistance, knee point voltage and excitation current. The rated burden of the core should be closer to the maximum burden requirement of metering and protection system so that to have better sensitivity and accuracy and it should not increase, increase 20 VA. And the security factor, the instrument security factor that is considered for the 400 kV voltage class should be more than 5 and 7 for the 765 kV and 11150 kV, it should be more than 10. The accuracy class of the metering core basically, it should be equal to or better than the accuracy class of the meter as specified in the CEA installation and operation of meter regulation 2006 or whatever is the, in the upcoming any revision is there in that case. And for the digital substation, use of non-conventional current transformer or the conventional current transformer with merging unit that are interfaced with the process bus and the station bus architecture should be there. And coming to the voltage transformer, then uh, it should design again, the design requirement should be as per the protection and metering system requirements and then the number of secondary cores should be considered the number of secondary cores, accuracy class, burdens and other parameters. Then the rated burden of the cores uh, should be basically uh, closer to the maximum burden requirement of metering and protection system for better sensitivity and accuracy and it should not exceed uh, 50 VA. The, again the accuracy class it should be better than equal or to or better than the accuracy class of the meter specified in the CA metering basically metering regulation 2006 on any new uh, amendments or whatever the, any new standard that is applicable again same is applicable for the digital substation as is applicable for the current transformer and uh, you know means uh, voltage transformers also come means have this power line carrier communication these are so use of capacitive voltage transformer basically comply with the relevant standard as suitable for the carrier coupling and uh, the capacitance of the capacitor voltage transfer shall be decided depending upon the requirement of the PLCC. So it is for, for, for the PLCC requirements basically. And in case of the gas insulated voltage transformer, it should be of the electromagnetic types. Technical particulars for the circuit breakers as defined in the standard, if you can see, it, uh, the mechanical endurance of the capacitor is uh, sorry the circuit breaker should be uh, M2 class and it should be have the uh, capability to perform the auto recloser operations and just like you for the 220 kV and EVA voltage class it should have single phase as well as the three phase auto recloser possible and for the circuit by 132 kV and below it should have three phase auto recloser. While for the 132 kV lines which have the frequent number of ground faults like those are which are located in the you know means uh, for forest area, heavy vegetation area or means you know means uh, hilly terrains all these places then for those kind type of 132 kV lines where this kind of uh, uh, frequent ground faults are there or the which are very prone to the lightning so there you can you should have this uh, uh, single phase as well as three phase auto recloser on the 132 kV lines also. And for all circuit breaker, there should be two number of trip coils fed through the two separate DC supply feeders. Okay. And for the 220 kV and waiver circuit breaker, the trip circuit supervision relay for both trip coil, DC supervision relays and lockout relay should be in place. So to monitor the healthiness of the circuit breakers, to monitor the healthiness of the trip command that is being executed through the trip coils and the DC circuit, uh, whether the DC power is available to the and whether the lockout is there or not, for lockout uh, protection for the relay is there or not. And it should have a provision for also the, all the breakers should have the provision for the manual trip also. 
the circuit breaker for the 400 kV voltage class for transmission line of more than 200 km. For the 400 kV class, it is more than 200 and for all the 725 voltage kV, kV class, uh, the transmission line, it should have the pre-insertion reactors, this, sorry, pre-insertion resistors or it can have a control switching devices for controlling the switching over voltages. So, it is mandated for 400 kV lines of more than 200 kilometers and for all 765 kV voltage lines. And the control switching devices that is being utilized it should be used only during the intentional energization or de-energization of the associated circuit breaker. And it should remain bypass otherwise including the fault and tripping. It should not be that it should be energized during the fault and tripping. Then the technical particulars about the line trap, disconnectors, earth switches, insulator and service resistor are provided in this slide. So the line trap uh, should be with the PLCC system. It should consist of the main coil in the form of an inductor. Twinning devices should be there, protective device in conjugation with the coupling capacitor or CVT for parallel, uh, to form the parallel resonance circuit basically. And it's designed no damage and functional issue with the temperature rise or magnetic field of the main coil and rated continuous current or rated short time current should be there. So the design should be that it should face no damage or any functional issue with increasing the temperature or the magnetic field of the main coil at rated continuous current or rated short time current. So the design should consider all these aspects. And the tuning device should be that in case there is a requirement of uh, to replacing the uh, present PLCC uh, without removing the line trap. So it should be means that uh, the tuning device should allow that uh, permit that replacement without removing the line trap. Then the disconnector and earthing switch. The earthing switch it should be provided to facilitate the earthing of the ongoing uh, outgoing transmission line to enable the maintenance basically. And it should be suitable for local electrical and as well as the manual operation. And only local operation is recommended for the earth switches basically. It should not be that it should be. Uh, in general, it is recommended because manually if automatic operation is performing, it is there and due to some issues that it has performed, then it results in a very severe kind of short circuit in the system. For the disconnector, it should be M2 class basically. The design should be, mechanical design should be from M2 class. It should be suitable for bus transfer current switching duty. Okay. And it should be for suitable for the local electrical manual and remote electrical operation also. So there should be for the isolator or what we call disconnector. It should be have both kind of electrical as well as manual as well as remote electrical operation also. While for our switches, it should be local electrical and manual operation. In case of the insulator, you can see that the different kind of specific type distance has been provided depending upon the pollution level. While for the surge resistor, it should be a station class, gap place, metal oxide, jet denol, zinc oxide uh, type surge resistor. Its requirement uh, uh, should be based on the rated voltage, continuous operating voltage, energy handling capability, normal and discharge current, and various other characteristics defined. And its location should be based on the insulation coordination study, and it should be provided with the leakage current monitoring with surge. Then. Uh, going back to the alternate AC as well as the DC supply at the substation. So it should be as per the CA standard for the connectivity to the grid regulation 2007 or any amendments that has further come into play which has come in and uh, in, has been introduced after 2007. The capacity of the battery for direct uh, current DC supply basically it should have a minimum duration that for a steady and continuous load, it should be operating for three hours. For emergency lighting load, it should be available for one hour. And the communication equipment at substation shall be provided with this battery backup. All communication equipment at substation shall be provided with the battery backup in line with the CA technical standard for the communication system and power system operation regulations. We have to refer to this regulation for the communication equipment uh, requirement for the uh, based on the battery. Uh, we should be provided with the battery backup. And the design of a, this uh, ACDC system should meet the requirement of the present as well as the plant future based in the substation. So you have to means if any substation is being designed, it always really has some specification for the future base by the uh, transmission planners basically. So it should meet the requirement of the present as well as the future base of the substation. And for 132 kV above substation, the DC system which is implemented with having the two set of DC battery 
each with separate float come boost charger with its auto with uh, auto changeover so in case any battery is failing or any um, uh, dc supply one is failing then it should automatically the whatever the uh, power that uh, has to be met it has to be met directly from the dc2 so that there is no uh, you know means disruption in the dc power to the different equipments and for the below 132 kv substation dc supply with one set of battery and charger with this separate float cam boost charger is applicable and if we talk about the voltage rating of the dc system for 132 and 66 kv it is 110 volt and for 220 kv and above it is 220 now let us talk about the protection and control the protective relaying system that is, is required to be placed in the uh, substation for the it should be like for the different equipments like transmission line transformer reactor and bus bar it should be selective sensitive fast graded and reliable protection system so that any fault in the system can be isolated or equipment fault can be isolated without impacting other equipments basically and the, all the major protection relay it is now mandated that it should be numerical type with is 61850 communication protocol and the protection should be grouped and it should be electrically or physically segregated, segregated into two groups basically like you say with main one protection main two protection it should be independent and capable of providing an interrupted protection each of these groups and there should be no interconnection or bare minimum interconnection between these two groups basically so you have to have your dc supply separate you have to have whatever the communication everything should be separated so and trip coil should be separated all these aspects is to be considered while designing the protection and relaying system as well as the control system for the substation and uh, so first protection we will talking about the bus bar protection and local breaker backup protection that is breaker failure protection the bus bar protection and the local breaker backup protection that is required to be provided in the 220 kb and above interconnecting substation as well as in the generating substation switch yard so 220 kb event substation and in all generating station switch yard irrespective of the voltage that has been i mean mandated and there should be a duplication of the bus bar protection for all main buses of 400 kb and above voltage level so bus bar also should be duplicated main one and main two should be there for 400 kb and above voltage class and the bus bar protection scheme it can be of centralized or distributed type and have protection for the planned and future expansion so you have to have the bus bar so that it has the capability that in case any additional of new lines or any addition of new base or any addition of new instruments is there or like transformer reactor capacitor all should be integrated in the uh, bus, the bus bar should have the, that much of expansion capability so let's talk about the protection on the on control for the transmission line so protection for the transmission line you can see that it is subdivided into four parts like uh, it is for the 765 kv 400 220 230 kv and 132 110 and 66 kv basically so the first one is the main distance protection you can see that is it is required and mandated for the all the if you see the 765 400 and 220 kv and above voltage level and uh, for six, it is also required for the 132 kV and never voltage level, but not required for the 66 kV level basically. While the main two, which can be a distance protection or a directional comparison uh, protection or a phase segregated line differential protection. So this is uh, required for the, you can see that the 765 and 400 kV, it is required for 220 kV and uh, basically, and it, it, it is not required for 220 or 230 kV system if in place of this distance protection directional idmt type over current or earth backup or earth fault backup protection is provided and for the 132 and below it is not required then the if you we talk about this differential protection uh, basically line differential protection with built up backup or distance protection basically so the wherever we are talking about the directional uh, comparison protection or the phase segregated line differential protection it should be a line differential protection should have already a built-in backup distance protection in case of the failure of the communication link then it should uh, be able to operate as a backup distance protection and it should be mandated for the this line differential line differential is basically recommended for the short lines of less than 10 kilometer or any cable or combination of overhead line and cable irrespective of the length then uh, basically uh, the third protection that is basically the idmt type earth fault relay basically for like you know means uh, you may be facing such kind of problem of vegetation related fault or which can be like you know means high resistive fault so for that the 765 400 kv well it is mandated and uh, 
it is required uh, if you know means uh, for 220 to 30 if it is required in case that uh, both main one and main two are distance protection then it is required otherwise it is not required because that uh, you can see that here it is already covered under this particular portion if it is uh, main two protection is basically a directional idmt over current and north pole backup protection then uh, the third one fourth one is the directional idmt over current and earth fault backup protection basically so this is not required in 765 it is not required in 400 while it is uh, again if you can see that uh, it is required if main two is not provided otherwise it is not required. let us say if somebody has not provided this protection then this is also applicable and this is also applicable while for the 132 kv and below it is not required and there is a requirement of two stage over voltage protection also it is required for 765 400 kV while for 220 and below voltage level it is not required in generally it can be placed if in case of uh, depending upon the requirement by the different utilities if there is a significant issue of voltages then they can certainly place such kind of over voltage protection in the for securing the uh, transformer or securing the different instrument at the substation and for the outer closing already discussed that um, it is for 765 kv 400 kv and 220 uh, and kv and uh, 230 kv means basically 220 kv and voltage level all is this uh, we should have the capability of single phase as well as a three phase auto recloser while for the 132 kv level it is basically three phase it can be there it cannot may, may not be required also there so you can see that no auto reclosing is required for the cable and combination of overhead line irrespective of the voltage level basically so for cable or if any line is having cable as well as the overhead line there is there is not a mandated requirement for the over auto reclosing feature and in case of the distance protection you know that it works on the you know means exchange of the carrier signal between the two different ends so to ensure that uh, the protection is uh, covering uh, the means uh, it has a better selectivity and a better reliability in terms of the operation for that the, either the carrier aided or the fiber optic based inter tripping a scheme or blocking feature should be there in the distance protection and for main one and main two it is mandated that the separate core of the current transformer and voltage transformer should be utilized this will ensure the protection system are not uh, means anywhere interlinked with each other Let us talk about the transformer and reactor protection. So you can see that again, different voltage level are there like the 765 by 400 kV transformer, 765 by 132 kV transformer. You need to have the differential REF. Differential will be main one, REF will be main two. Then you need to have overflux protection, basically VYF protection. And also you need to have backup directional overcurrent and earth fault relay for HV and LV side or impedance protection. So to, to ensure that if any fault it is outside the I means transformer then also it should operate with a good amount of you know means uh, protection with a proper protection coordination let us say if any fault is there and the main protection of the line is not operating and fault is being fed from the transformer certainly the transformer will operate after a certain amount of time so to ensure that the fault gets cleared then the other protection like bucos winding temperature indicator while temperature indicator this is for required for the 1 MD and above transformer MOG with low oil level of alarms OSR for OLTC oil surgery basically PRD basically pressure using devices surge register on both primary and secondary side of transformer located outdoors and connected to overhead line so these are the one group of protection that is there basically and then there is a tertiary winding protection is there for 765 all are mandated 400 also like 400 by 220 or 400 or 132 kb transform are all in mandated then there is a 220 by 230 uh, 220 230 132 or 110 kb transform like 220 by one, uh, uh, 132 kb 220 by 110 kb then it can be 230 by 100 kb or 220 by uh, 132 kb this can be different combination can be there for that also all are mandated while only for the 66 by 11 kV, 62 by 32, 33 kV, the protection that is not required is basically the REF protection. Basically. So because it is in generally it will be it is being considered that uh, the entire differential protection should take care of the requirements basically. And while for the if you see about the reactor protection, then you can see that it has the main one as differential, main two as REF protection and there are other like backup over current protection backup like impedance type or definite over current type are 
our current and our fault type protection are there then backup directional lower current and our fault type hvlv side or impedance protection are there and we also have buckles wti oti mog and oil level alarms as a register if required is there so it is uh, like for the 765 kv reactors 400 and 220 kv reactors for all of them it is mandated then coming to the disturbance recorder event loggers and time synchronization equipment at the substation level the each line and transformer reactor or any other way it is required to have a disturbance recording and event recording and time synchronization equipment it is mandated and for all the transmission line you need to have a fault locator basically distance to fault locator and the all the disturbance recording system that you are in place minimum recording time of 3 second with 0.5 second of default and 2.5 second of post fault so let us say a fault is there so let us say a fault is happening at this place then this is 0.5 so that you know the what is the pre condition for attending to the fault and then its operation is there what is the post how it is being stabilized or any other protection are also being operated or not in that case this is 2.5 so this 2.5 can also you can exceed it to 4.5 also so in generally that has been utilized then the time synchronization equipment it should have uh, antenna all cables and processing equipment then it should be receiving signal synchronizing first to the gps system or the indian navigation indian regional navigation uh, satellite system that we call navic basically and it should be compatible for synchronization of uh, uh, event logger disturbance recorder pmu supervisory control and data vision system and the substation automation system so whatever the time synchronizing equipment should be there it should be compatible with the synchronization of all these different kind of facilities as required as the substation like event logger dr pmu scada subsas basically then the this one is the about the optical ground wire and the power line carrier communication we were talking about the distance protection there in that it was mentioned that the whenever we are providing a distance protection then you need to have the distance protection to have the enough selectivity reliability requirement in terms of the utilizing the carrier protection basically or the fiber optic protection based carrier so optical ground wire along with the necessary terminal equipment should be in place for all transmission line of 110 kv and above basically and it should it can be utilized for a speech line protection and data channel so it is provided line protection a speech transmission and as well as the data channel for providing the data to the control center or providing the data to the uh, means other asset management center and it should have the process speech transmission between the two end of the substation or it can be utilized for the speech transmission from the control center to the substation or control center substation to different other locations basically and the primary path for the teleprotection should be point to point OPZW that is very much mandated and the alternative path can be utilized is either the PLCC or predefined physically diversified optical ground wire path so you can either utilize the first is that for teleprotection you have first channel as optical fiber basically you have the fiber communication we will utilize and the second either you can use PLCC or as well as the optical fiber again for the reliable communication below 110 kV level, we are talking about that 110 kV and above level this one. Now below 110 kV level, has, this will be as per the technical standard for communication system for the power system operation regulation 2020. So you need to refer that regulation. And whatever the communication channel you are using, you need to have a 100% backup of communication channels. Let us say for protection system of 400 kV and above higher voltage level and line compensating equipment so whenever you are utilizing this uh, protection system uh, based on the optical fiber communication or the plcc you need to have a complete 100 percent redundancy on the communication channel there should be two channel for teleprotection in addition to the one channel for a speech plus data for each direction so either direction of that the transmission line and for 220 kv 132 and 66 kv lines channel for a speech plus data can also be used for the teleprotection so you can utilize the same channel for the teleprotection also and in case whenever this uh, P or P optical fiber or plcc that are being installed you need to have the proper coordination among the generating company and the transmission licensee or the dividend transmission licensee at the both end of the substation or switch are ensuring that the there is a proper compatibility of the OPW and PLCC at their respective end. So there is no uh, problem that is being faced while uh, this uh, establishment of the proper teleprotection scheme or the establishment of the uh, means, you know, means, uh, communication between the substation, information exchange between the substation. 
then this aspect is uh, basically about the phasor measurement unit that is required to be placed in the substation so this phasor measurement unit you can see the what is the what is the requirement of phasor measurement unit what is the purpose why it is being uh, why it is very much popular so you can see in other uh, videos in the video lectures and so here we will be discussing about the requirement that has been has been placed here so it is basically used for real time monitoring facility uh, by the control centers and it is to be provided with uh, fiber optic connectivity because of the amount of data time synchronized as you know that is phasor measurement unit is going to provide synchro phasor that is time synchronized phasor data so it, it needs to have a time synchronization device like the gps receiver and the communication equipment and there should be a proper bandwidth for this because of the large amount of data that's why fiber optic connectivity is required and the coverage requirement for the PMU that is uh, in place is that it should be placed at all the substation of 400 kV and above voltage level, any switch yard of generating a station at 220 kV and above voltage level, any alternative current side of the HVDC substation, the converter bin is basically pooling point of the renewable energy so generating a station of 50 megawatt and above and the battery energy storage system of 50 megawatt and above in all these places the pmu should be placed so that the direct and communication and gps should be in also in place for that PMU synchro phaser data to be sent to the control centers and this all these phaser management units should comply with the ic 6025518-1-2018 protocols basically and the pmu communication with the phaser data constituents are installed at certain strategic location should be uh, means uh, uh, whatever the equipment that you are installing for the communication it should enable that it should be able to communicate to the respective phasor data concentrator for sending the data